Hello, Tim Dashwood here. I'm very pleased today to show off Secret Identity, my latest plugin available through Effects Factory. So let's just have a look at where you can find Secret Identity. In Final Cut Pro 10, open up the Effects Palette and uh, just look for Dashwood Face Tracking. You'll see Secret Identity right there. And over in Premiere Pro or After Effects or even Final Cut Pro 7 in Motion, uh, you just look in the Effects category and look for Dashwood Face Tracking and you'll find Secret Identity. So let's have a look at how Secret Identity works. Well, normally it would be used for shots like this, where it's just an interview shot and uh, someone's sitting there for however long the interview shot is, and you just need to obscure their face. You don't want anyone to know who they are. So that's a typical use for it. And it would be very easy to uh, use simple keyframing to do a shot like this. But what if you have a shot like this, where the camera's moving around and you need to track the face. Well, it becomes much more complicated. So Secret Identity actually does most of the heavy lifting for you. And you can see I just applied it to this clip and it automatically found this guy's face and just blacked it out. So now we can't see who this biker is. Now, we have a few different ways of blocking out the faces. Um, we can choose different methods. So right now it's set to solid color, but we could change that to blur or we could change it to pixelate, or we could use a custom image. And I'll show you this a little later, but you would use this, uh, for example, if you just wanted to put uh, the word censored over a mouth. Um, so let's just put this back to solid color for a second. Uh, we have many different presets that are already part of Secret Identity, and you can make your own presets as well. So for example, black bar over eyes, if I select that, I get the black bar over the eyes. We have uh, black out the face, black out the mouth, blur the face, blur the mouth, uh, image over the mouth. And this is an example where it's already set up to put the, uh, the little censored stamp over the mouth. But a really cool one is this one down here at the bottom, short depth of field. So if I select that, uh, now what happens is the face stays exactly as it was, but it gives us a short depth of field effect where just this guy's face is in focus and everything else is out of focus. And we'll try that a little later on a, a few other shots. So I'm just going to go back to black out the face. So let's have a look at uh, a few of the options in Secret Identity. Uh, first, we have the tracking method. So it's set to automatic face tracking. But unfortunately, there will always be times when the automatic face tracker just might not work very well. Um, maybe the shot is underexposed or someone turns their head away, or even if their head touches the edge of the screen and we only get half of a face, it tricks the tracker and the tracker just can't detect the face. So in that case, you can switch to manual keyframes and then we get the uh, this face position um, down here where we can keyframe the face or we could also do just the mouth or just the eye. So you'll see we, we get mouth position. And then in the case of eyes, we get the left eye position and the right eye position. Now I'm just gonna switch back to automatic face tracking again. And I'm just gonna switch over to Final Cut Pro and choose a shot where we have uh, multiple faces. Okay, so here's a situation where we have multiple faces. So I'll apply Secret Identity to this shot, and all the faces in the scene are blocked out. Now what we can do is identify these faces. So up in the top, we have an option to identify faces, so I'll just click that. And in Final Cut Pro 10, we also have these great on-screen controls, so we can just click it there as well. And what Secret Identity actually does is it uh, sorts faces based on their width. So face number one is the largest face in the scene, and then it sorts them that way. Now, if I just want to blur out face number two, I'll go down here to face selection and select just face number two. And then I can turn off the identify faces. And then of course, once again, I can just choose my method that I want to use to pixelate. Uh, I like pixelization. 
And for each of these methods, by the way, uh, different options may come up. So in the case of pixelate, we have an amount slider, which just determines how much you want to pixelate. And the same thing with blur. So if you want a lot of blur, a little bit of blur, um, you know, for example, if we just want to hide the identity, but we still want to keep some facial features, then we can turn that blur amount down and then we still get a little bit of detail and it's a subtle, uh, a very subtle effect. Um, in the case of solid color, we have a color chooser, a color picker. So instead of black, we could choose any other color that we want, like that. And then uh, this fourth selection here, custom image, that allows us to put any image that we like uh, on here. Now there's a default image in the plugin that just is like a censored stamp. Um, but in this case, let's say I want to uh, put a happy face on here. I'll just select custom image in this uh, image well here, this drop zone. And then I'll just find the image I want to use, which is a happy face. I, I've already imported this. This is just a PNG with an alpha uh, that I made in Photoshop. And then I would click apply clip. And there we go. Now we have a happy face. Now let's try this over in Premiere Pro where the process is a little bit different. Uh, in my project, I've brought in this happy face PNG. I'm just going to put it on another layer above my clip. Now, we don't wanna actually see this happy face up here. So I can just control click on it and uh, disable it. So that's, that's one method. Or if it is enabled, and this is where you put all of the options for uh, custom image, then you could just turn off the visibility of that layer itself. So that's another way to do it. But in this case, I'm just going to disable that clip. And now over here in, uh, for my clip, which is still on V1, I'm just going to select custom image. And now instead of an image well, or a drop zone, like I would have in Final Cut Pro, um, instead in After Effects and Premiere, you're going to have a selection to select a video layer. So in this case, I'm going to select video layer two because that's where I put the happy face. And there we go. Now I have a, I have a happy face on my, uh, on my biker here. Now let's have a look at how good the tracker actually is. I'm just going to apply Secret Identity to this clip. And this guy is moving his head around quite a bit. So I'm just going to hit play here so we can see how much he's actually moving his head. You can see in real time, the tracker has some issues covering his face at all times. If I were to render this, um, it would be much better. So let's just very quickly render this. Okay, so now that it's rendered, let's just hit play and have a look. And you can see that it's much better, but still it kind of moves around a bit. So pick a particularly bad frame here where he's moving his head quite a bit. We have some advanced options. So there's a, a turn down here that says advanced. And in uh, Final Cut Pro 10, you would just click show. Over in Premiere Pro, you would just turn down the arrow here to get the advanced settings. So I'll just turn on check tracking accuracy. And what that's going to show me are the points for the nose, the mouth, and the two eyes. And I can start playing at this point with uh, some of the advanced options that are included here. The first one is detailed tracking. Now the way the tracker works is it tries to find um, faces with the most confidence possible. What detailed tracking does is if you turn it off, it stops trying to find faces with um, exact perfect detail. And so uh, this helps in situations where you have multiple faces in your scene. We'll see how that works in a second. In this particular situation, by toggling it on and off, I hardly see any difference in the positioning of, of the uh, trackers. Uh, the accuracy could either be low or high. And in this case, because he's moving his head around so much, an accuracy of low might actually work better for us. Uh, better eye locks, that just attempts to get the crosshairs specifically right on the, the eye eyeballs. 
And in most cases, uh, we wouldn't really care about that unless we were only blocking out just the eyes. These stability sliders just basically let us take the wobble out of the tracker. In the case of using blur or pixelization, this isn't really an issue. But sometimes when you use uh, a custom image, the tracker is so accurate that you'll see, um, you'll see it vibrate. And so this will basically allow you to take that vibration out. And then, of course, anti-aliasing. Um, this is really only useful if you're blocking out, say, just the eyes and the person tilts his head. Well, we would want a, a high anti-aliasing level so that that straight line doesn't have any stair-stepping. So let's have a look at how these settings affect a complicated shot. Okay, here's an example here. So we have six faces in this shot. I'm going to apply Secret Identity. Now, right away, I'm only able to track one face at a time because there's so many faces in the scene and the faces are so small that the tracker is having a very difficult time. So we'll go into the advanced settings. We'll turn on check the tracking accuracy first. And then the first thing I'm going to do is turn off detailed tracking. And you can see right away that with detailed tracking turned off, I now get uh, five of the six faces being tracked just right. And if I carefully look, you can see that for most of the shot, most of the faces are being tracked properly. So in this case, um, if I want to use the tracker with this shot, I would leave detailed tracking off. And then of course, before I'm done with advanced, make sure to turn off the uh, check the tracking accuracy option. And then in this case, you know, once again, I'll identify the faces. And let's say I only want to blur out face number six. Then I would just select face number six. Turn this off. I would use the pixelate method. And there we go. Now the little girl's identity is protected. Now here's a situation where I may want to shorten the depth of field of this shot. So once again, I'll just put secret identity on there. And I already have a preset for this, so I'll select short depth of field. And right away, the shot already looks better. Now the girl's face has a nice short depth of field to it, but we still have a little bit, uh, it, the zone is just a little too large here, so I'm still seeing uh, some in-focus areas in the background here. So what I can do is adjust the scale of the effect. So if I bring the scale down, See, we can bring it right down to just this portion of her face. And it's just kind of a neat effect. Of course, we can change the uh, amount of blur if we don't want it to be so extreme. Down like that. And we'll just toggle the before and the after. And now it's a pretty nice looking shot. So that's Secret Identity. You, of course, can just go into to Effects Factory and you'll find it under uh, Dashwood. And uh, you can try it out for free using uh, an unlimited trial. It's just watermarked. And then, of course, you can purchase it directly through Effects Factory anytime you're ready to remove the watermark.